There we go, we're on. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's um, program to about all about the process. Just uh, a refresher on our on-campus interview program and how it um, all works. Um, today, we just wanna keep this as an open discussion and answer any of your questions. We'll start with a little reminder and go through a few slides. Um, feel free to interject, to ask questions as we go along. Um, I'm joined today by my colleagues, um, Dean Fitzpatrick, Colleen O'Byrne, Meg Wager, and I'd like to introduce our newest member, Dan Bellana, who is our Associate Director, who joined us in May. Um, Dan uh, previously worked at a large law firm in New York City, and then he did some public interest positions before he joined us here today. So he's a great resource for all of you as well. Um, so I'm gonna start by sharing my screen with the PowerPoint, and we're gonna go over some basics. Many of you probably remember some of the on-campus um, techniques from when you applied back in January. So let me see if I can do this. Does everyone see the PowerPoint? Look at me, I'm very tech savvy today. Um, so we're talking today about the July and August on-campus interview program. And this is where the on-campus interview program begins, but it's certainly not where it ends. So I just wanna make sure that that's clear, that there's been some confusion with students. They think that this might be all that's coming their way, but this is not the case. Large law firms, large government agencies, they tend to hire earlier on in the season. So they come out of the gate first. So if for any reason you don't see something that interests you or you, you're not sure you're qualified for these positions, please discuss this with your career counselor because there are other positions you know, throughout the entire year. There's different seasons for this. So right now we're gonna talk about some key dates and deadlines. So in the months of June and July, now would be the time for you to update your resumes, right? Hopefully many of you had it done you know, in the spring semester. So now's the time to update it. You'll update it with academic information if it's applicable, journal information, um, your summer position, any, uh, if you're gonna be a teaching assistant, a research assistant, anything like that will go on your resume now to update it. And we encourage you through the month of June and July to send it to your career counselor, um, make an appointment with them and have it up, you know, have it reviewed before you upload it to Albany Law Link. Um, and I, I've asked my colleagues to chime in whenever they, they'd like to um, add anything uh, to the program. Um, and you're gonna upload those to Albany Law Link in your document library. Um, just keep in mind, um, you know, you don't want to wait until the very last minute. And I'll, I'll mention that as we continue on the dates. As of June 1st, you were able to start viewing the opportunities. So for any of the students who've um, been on Albany Law Link, you'll notice that you can view the opportunities, but you cannot apply yet. There is no apply button. Um, you will be able to start applying between July 6th through July 12th. So at 12.01 a.m. on July 6th, the apply button will appear and at 11.59 p.m. on July 12th, the apply button will disappear. Um, when you're dealing with the on-campus recruiting side, on-campus interviews, there's no, there's no benefit to applying on July 6th versus July 12th. Um, unlike non-OCR, where the employers are getting it in real time, um, here these will be released to the employers um, on July 13th. Um, keeping in mind these dates though, right? If you're going to meet with your counselor, uh, the law school is closed uh, July 5th to, um, for the holiday, the July 4th holiday. So you don't want to wait till the last minute, right, to, to upload your documents. They may need to be approved if you haven't uploaded something already. Um, so just, you know, plan ahead is, is really the message here. Um, so once you apply after July 12th, between July 17th and July 20th, um, that's when you will be notified that you've been selected for an interview and that is the time that you're going to go on and accept your pre-select if you've been accepted. These are all virtual interviews, again, this season. So you will be doing these um, you know, remotely. So it's, a, it's, it's virtual. If you don't sign up for your pre-select interviews, then um, you know, Meg lets us know and, and we will reach out to you. So keep an eye on these dates just to make the process as seamless as possible. Um, and then come July 23rd, July, and then July 27th through the 30th, August 2nd through the 6th, that's when the interviews will take place. 
Is there any questions so far? And I don't know if anybody, I can't see the bottom of my screen. So if, if one of my colleagues can tell me if there's any questions. So far so good. All right, we'll move to slide two. Um, here are just some quick tips as you upload your document. You, when you upload your cover letter, let's say Alan and Overy, you're gonna upload your cover letter, keep the name of your files simple. The longer the file, the chances that you can, uh, they can become encrypted. So in the, the example on the screen, you know, cover letter, my cover letter for Alan Overy for fall 2021 with underscores, that's gonna cause some issues. That's just too long of a file name. It could encrypt your file. And when you upload it, um, it's, it's, they won't be able to view it. And it may cause, uh, you may cause other students' files to be encrypted as well. So keep the, you know, keep the name short. Employers don't see what you name it. So, you know, Alan over cover letter works. Um, also, when you upload your um, documents, they get converted to PDF. Make sure you go on and check them out, right? Make sure that they converted correctly. Sometimes an extra space goes on the bottom and your resume is two pages versus one. The cover letter may not break where you think it's breaking on Microsoft Word. So please make sure just to go in and make sure your application looks clean and neat. Um, do not force your margins. A minimum, minimum margin of three quarters of an inch is recommended. Um, do not use the landscape orientation. Um, again, if you go on and check this out, you'll see exactly what the employer is gonna say. And that's what you wanna make sure. Um, you know, we, we can send this PowerPoint to all of you to use Microsoft Word version 5.0 or higher. Don't use headers or footers. Um, do not use page, page breaks. At this point in your law school career, your resumes should be limited to one page. Um, again, work with your career counselor on all your documents and uh, they, they will definitely help you get these to, the, to where you want them to look. Um, and then with your transcript, so the documents that you're going to need to, to upload, for most of these positions, it's going to be a resume, a cover letter, and a transcript um, for most of these right now. When you upload your transcript, you want to do the web advisor version. And if you go on to Albany Law Link under career resources and you put in keyword transcript, there's a step-by-step -step directions on how to do that. Some students will put up a grade report. Some students will cut and paste their grades and put them in a Word document. That's not what employers are looking for. They are looking for the web advisor version. It's a, it's a little bit more official as it can be when you're doing an online copy. Um, the writing sample will be needed, but may not be needed at the application process. It may, um, but definitely by the time you go to the interviews, they may be asking for it. So now's the time when you have time to get your writing sample you know, in good shape. Um, the district attorney's offices, if you're looking at a district attorney's offices, they may ask for an application, they may ask for a statement of interest, they may ask for a cover letter and a statement of interest. So make sure you look to see what documents are needed and feel free to ask your career counselor with your, any questions regarding that. Any questions so far? No, if I'm going too fast, just slow me down. Um, there are some keywords and definitions with Albany Law Link that we just wanted to make sure that you understood. The application period is the period where you're going to be able to submit your documents. Again, for this session, we talked about uh, July 6th through 12th. Um, and bidding. I'm, I'm wondering, Meg, do you think now is a good time to go on? And maybe we can go through these terms while you're on? Sure, Joanne, that sounds good. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to turn this over to Meg Wager, who's going to share her screen. And a lot of this will make more sense when Meg goes through it. Okay, thank you, Joanne. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see the screen? Okay, so this is when you log into your Albany Law Link account, this is your homepage. And this is where um, you are going to be able to log in and see what's happening with on-campus recruiting. Okay, so over on the left side under on-campus recruiting, that you can open this up and you're gonna click on scheduling. Okay, and this is going to take you to 
the two sessions that relate to our upcoming virtual season. So we've got the July and August 2021 virtual interviews. And then we also have the resume collect program. So let's take a look. I'm just gonna do a clean view of the virtual interviews to get started. And I am, my test student is a 2L student. So this is what, if you're a 2L, this is what you're going to be looking at, okay? So first up on the list, I'm looking at Harder Seacrest. I'm just going to, uh, bear with me one minute here. I just wanna shorten my screen here on my end. So um, if, as you look at this, you can review this posting for Harder Seacrest, but over on this side, you're gonna notice there's a column for the locations that the employers are interviewing for. There's interview dates are listed here. The invitation column is when you're selected for an interview. This comes up later. Um, and that's during the time when, when you are uh, pre-selecting your sign-up times. Over on this side is applying the bidding timeline, which has not started yet. And that will open up uh, again, as Joanne mentioned, on the 6th. And then there's the bidding deadline of July 12th. So if I just go over and click on the review button, it's going to open up and it's going to show me more about that particular opportunity. So it looks like a regular job posting, okay? But on the right-hand side, you're gonna notice the important dates that relate to the C this particular session. So uh, you've got your, as Joanne mentioned, some of the terms are going to pop up here that we were looking at a little bit uh, earlier on the slide. So we start our bidding or what is known as applying, uh, our start date is 7-6, and then it, the bidding ends on the 12th. The employers are going to start reviewing applications on the 13th. So they could potentially select you for an interview as soon as the 13th, if they're viewing them that soon. So you, you're gonna to start to see in your invitations column that we looked at a moment ago, you're gonna to start to see the word pre-select. It's gonna pop up. You're not gonna be able to do anything with it until the sign-up period opens um, down on the 17th but you're gonna to start to see uh, what your status is with those employers at that time. On the 17th, where you noted that you were pre-selected, uh, the pre-select word will actually turn into a button and you're going to be able to start um, clicking on that button and signing up for your interview times on the 17th and that goes through the 20th. Um, I will say during this period to, to really try um, to get in as soon as you can and get yourself scheduled for your interview appointments. So that if you have more, if you have a few interview appointments, you have an opportunity to schedule yourself um, in a way that works well with your, with your academic schedule um, or your work schedule. So, um, and then on the, uh, again, on the 13th is your interview display. This section, bid details, is where you're actually going to be applying for the position. So, You'll notice here for this particular employer, there's a, a, a field for the resume, a field for the cover letter, a field for transcript, and a field for writing sample. Right now, it's not accepting those documents, but when the, um, the bidding period opens, there will be drop downs here where you're going to actually be selecting from your document section. The drop down is going to allow you to select your resume, cover letter, transcript, and your writing sample. For this employer, uh, they're actually applying or they're accepting applications for more than one location. There will be a section here where you will be able to rank your preferences for location and the, the locations will be here for you and you'll be able to select one, two, and so on for employers that have more than one location. Okay. You'll notice here they're interviewing for Buffalo and Rochester. So up here, there will be actually a field for the Rochester location and a field for the Buffalo. Okay, so let me go back to the list here. Does anyone have uh, any questions so far? Does this seem, just wanna double check, all good? Okay, just wanna go to um, have a look at the, the resume collect section. Oh, right here. I'm just going to scroll down. Let's see. Actually, probably easier for me just to go back this way. 
So for the resume collect, it looks a little bit different in that you don't have the interview dates, okay? Because these employers, they're collecting applications through this program. The group of materials will go directly to the employer and then the employer will be reaching out directly to you if they're interested in making interviewing arrangements with you. Um, and over in the important date section for the resume collect employers, it's very short. It's just the review date um, that you're beginning to see that the opportunities, which is June 1, and then the bidding date, which is the same as the virtual interview program. In this section, it, it's built the same. You're attaching the documents that they're requesting. And then down here, you have information, should you, I, I should have mentioned that for the other, you do have information available to you as to who a cover letter would be directed to if one is required. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, Joanne, I'll stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Meg. And I will continue to share mine again. So Meg went over some of those key terms um, and went through the, uh, the session for on-campus and the resume collect. You know, we do encourage our students, if you're interested in multiple geographic locations, you know, this would be the time to cast your net widely. You know, you can interview. Um, there is one word here that callbacks that we didn't go over. And it was interesting, we were in an appointment this morning and um, our student didn't realize that a callback interview is when you're invited back to the employer's you know, office for the second round. So what you're doing here virtually are the screening interviews, right? So those will be all virtually. The callbacks can be virtual or they may be in person. This is definitely a, you know, a, you know, a season of transition. Um, we heard from one employer in New York City that they are all back. They are fully back. We heard from another employer, they're not coming back till after Labor Day. So, you know, be prepared for anything. Be prepared for both, you know, both types of interviews. The callback is when you've done a good job at the screening interview, and now that interviewer wants to call you back and have you, you know, meet partners and associates at the firm. It can, if it's virtual, you know, it, it can last a couple of hours. If it's in person, it can last longer. If it's in person, it could include lunch or coffee. Um, and again, your career counselor can walk you through this. If you are invited back to the office from a large law firm, most likely the firm will be paying for you to travel down um, You know, if, if you are going in a location outside of Albany. So if you have any questions about that, I just bring it up because our student this morning wasn't aware and was you know, working in a public interest volunteering this summer and was worried about the cost of going down to the city to, to do the callbacks. And, and we explained to her that if she was invited back, most likely the firm would be picking up the cost for that. Um, this year, so once you do do the interviews, you know, last year, if you did them, we did them by Zoom. This year, we'll be doing some by Zoom, um, and we'll also be doing some during Flow Recruit. Meg, do you want to mention this to the students? Sure, Joanne, thank you. Um, Flow Recruit is, it's an, it's an interview management system, which is really um, just an additional platform that is used for interviews um, in, in place of, of Zoom, which is what we've usually, we usually use. Um, there will be a training for Flow Recruit, as you can see. Um, it'll be on Wednesday, June 30th from 8 to 8.30. We are using Albany Law Link for all the scheduling. Everything is done there, uh, just the same as it has been in the past. It's we're, The Flow Recruit system is, is, just think of it in place of Zoom. Um, there will be an automated message that comes to you that gives you a schedule of all of your interviews, and you'll only have one link to use to, uh, to join your virtual interview room. So everything will be organized in one place. Thank you, Meg. And uh, for my students on the call, you know that I am not tech savvy, and if I can do it, I know that you guys can do it quite easily. So um, that'll be exciting to get that launched as well. Um, here are just some, to wrap a few things up, you know, that we're here to assist you. Um, just a couple of things. This summer, we're going to be doing a series of programs, um, career education programs. They're all virtual this summer. So if you can hop on to, to Zoom and, and join us, um, it'll definitely expand your network. It's a great way to prepare for interviews, develop new skills. 
We've done some mock interviews this week. If you didn't get a chance to uh, sign on and get a mock interview, um, you can work with your counselor, but we are gonna plan on doing the program again um, before the on-campus um, interviews start. Um, if you went to the program on Monday, one of the alumni said to practice, practice, practice. That's the best way um, with your interview. So that goes with the mock interview. We can connect you with alumni that are um, working in some of these uh, firms and employers. So if you have an interview with the Bronx County District Attorney's Office, we can put you in touch with an alum who's working there. Same thing with all of the law firms. And we can really, you know, help you um, get a better understanding of the employer you're interviewing with. Um, we encourage you to research the employer, do your due diligence, um, and then also to look beyond Albany Law Link, right? Albany Law Link's a great tool, but it's certainly not the only one. If you are looking at larger law firms, we have Chambers Associate, we have the NELP directory, there's Vault, which you should be getting access to shortly. Um, we had someone who was interested in the Albany area today. The Business Review puts out a book of lists for the area's largest law firms. Um, so make sure you not only focus on Albany Law Link, but on the resources that are beyond that resource. So at that point, I'm going to stop sharing and open it up to any questions. Joanna, I'll chime in here too. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, of course. So again, I'm Dan. I'm the new associate director here at the law school. Um, I want to say that I did this process. It was something very new to me when I was a student. I had, it, like, like Joanne was saying, there's a lot of terms, a lot of things going on. Um, it's an exciting process. And I just wanted to let you guys know that you can email me, talk to me. And, you know, I'm someone who interviewed a lot of these large law firms. I did a lot of research with them and I can help you guys, you know, prepare for this very exciting process. So I'm here. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. And Dan interviewed, when he was a student, he interviewed in Albany, New York City. He even went to Cleveland, which he surprisingly uh, really enjoyed. Um, yeah, exactly. New York City grabbed him first. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and I never even thought I was gonna look at New York City, to be honest. I, I thought I was gonna be here in Albany, but uh, I really kept an open mind and I did my research, did my diligence, talked to alumni, talked to my career counselors. Meg was mine who helped me out with it. Actually, I do remember that now. Um, and so, and, and it worked out for me. And so it'll work out for you guys as well. And I'm happy to help with you with that. So any questions, you can raise your hand. You can um, just unmute yourself, chime in. Well, with that, I guess we will um, say, um, goodbye and let us know if you have any questions you can feel free to reach out to any of us um, and we wish you luck through this process and please keep us updated I, I think the last I'll end on the note that um, and I think the other career counselors will agree with me is that the student who keeps their career counselor updated you know on the good and the bad so if if you're not selected for interviews you know let us know and if you're selected for interviews but you don't get callbacks let us know and let us know sooner rather than later right and we can we can work on you, work with you to see what's what's going on there. So, um, and keep us keep us updated on on everything. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you.